My theological agnosticism on the theory of evolution. In my studies, I have attempted to show that the theory of evolution is compatible with belief in God and that from an Islamic perspective, there is no need to oppose this theory. Yet, I rejected the claim that some verses of the Quran openly reveal the theory of evolution. When combined, these arguments show that it is impossible to argue for or against the theory of evolution based solely on the content of the Quran. The best stance for a Muslim, then, is to evaluate scientific, philosophical aspects of the theory independently from religious concerns, remaining theologically agnostic about evolution. By theological agnosticism, I mean that since the Quran neither favors nor rejects the theory, one should, with respect to theology, be agnostic about whether evolution is true or not. There are simply no texts in the Quran that affirm or deny the truth of evolution. Therefore, a Muslim should in good faith focus entirely on the scientific aspects of the theory, safely setting religious considerations aside. I do not use the term theological agnosticism in its common sense of God is unknowable. The Quran affirms both the existence of and attributes of God, and it reveals the creation of life by God. However, since the Quran doesn't reveal the method which God has followed in creation, it is rational to be agnostic over these methods when viewed from a purely religious angle. I suggest adopting theological agnosticism over every issue that doesn't conflict with the existence of God or content of the Quran. So, for example, we should remain theologically agnostic about whether continents were once conjoined but split off according to plate tectonics. And since we can't know from studying the Quran, we should likewise remain theologically agnostic about whether species were created independently or evolved from each other. My religion doesn't teach me to be scientifically agnostic about evolution. It teaches me that there is no problem, no matter whatever stance I take on it. In other words, theological agnosticism doesn't describe view of the theory itself. It describes my position when I view the theory from a purely religious angle. A Muslim should approach this theory from this perspective and stays unprejudiced. Muslims should reach their opinions about it without any religious concerns, just as they should do when assessing fluid dynamics or Einstein's general theory of relativity. What does the scientific evidence say about the theory of evolution? Despite some remaining questions about it, it is the most successful scientific theory of all alternatives. Indeed, there is a marvelous beauty in this theory as it relates all living beings to each other and reveals some kind of a unity in life. If the Quran required the rejection of the theory of evolution, there would have been an incompatibility with the claim of science and religion. But none of the Quran's numerous verses about life in general and humankind in particular conflict with evolution. Conflict, of course, was a possibility. For example, if a verse had claimed that the universe, life or humans were created 6,000 years ago, that would have been a conflict with scientific results. Or if the Quran had taught that living species never change, there would have been a conflict. But the Quran doesn't. There is no conflict between the Quran and evolution. While, Islamically speaking, there can be no inconsistency between science and Islam, I don't assume science and religion are separate. I see my position close to such Muslim philosophers as Ibn Rushd, who regard the science and religion as 
companions. My studies have brought me to this fundamental standpoint. Science, religion and philosophy cannot possess independent truths. While science and religion have their own distinct methodologies, they should be integrated into our best and most complete understanding of the world. The adoption of theological agnosticism, particularly on issues in the philosophy of religion, is important in religion, philosophy, science relations. I don't suggest this merely to resolve conflict. I believe that it is also the best religious stance. If God has not revealed his intentions on an issue to us, it is best to say, I don't know. Staying theologically agnostic about the methods God used in creation is both compatible with and even preferable for all three monotheistic religions. Such an approach avoids many unnecessary conflicts between religion and science.